Well, hey, don't sneak up on me, folks. I'm just getting everything ready for you. Good night, and welcome once again to another hot episode of Keeping It Real. I'm your special host, your one and only, yours truly, Norbert Williams. And it has been, just give me a second here, folks. Just give me a second. Don't get vexed. You know, sometimes you got to do things with live TV. You have to get everything in order. Welcome once again to the hottest show in the land. Some people believe it is. And of course, you know, there'll be the detractors who believe. Somebody says it's amazing. Every time your show comes on, the volume goes down. You've got to normalize that, guys. Normalize that. So, budget throne speech today. I think the first time ever in the history of St. Lucia, I stand to be corrected, that the throne speech by our Governor General in this instance, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, and another person says the volume, S-U, and you know the other re letters. As soon as the disclaimer is, the volume reduces. So you all got to figure that out over there. Right. Now, folks, remotely from Government House, Governor General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack gave the throne speech today. And of course, everything changed. Everybody wasn't upstairs in the chamber. Some of them were downstairs because of the times that we're in, the coronavirus and all of this. You know, we have protocols in place. And even the House of Parliament is subject to the protocols. Social distancing, they call it. There was no military parade. The police were not there. You know, St. Lucian's like they drum. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. But let me get through the niceties first. Shout outs, of course, to the diaspora. Those of you in New York, in Atlanta, Georgia, Miami, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, LA, you know, on the West Coast, California, in San Antonio, Texas, Houston, all over. And of course, Toronto, Quebec, all over Canada, Northeast, Newfoundland, Greenland. Yeah, we have people watching all over there too. So keeping it real is keeping it real all over. And of course, in London, England, there are a few people who stay up very late every week to watch the show. But of course, good night to those of you here in St. Lucia, in Le Clary, Odsa, in Canaries, in Debarra. And I got a call. Yes, folks, I got a call on Sunday a friend of mine who said he was just in Debara, or he was there at the time he called, and there was a crowd of people somewhere in somebody's house watching the show, the replay, the rebroadcast, you know, Sundays at 4 p.m. Keeping it real is back on the air if you missed it on Tuesday. And of course, those of you in Labry, I have quite a few fans in Labry who've messaged me and sent emails on the uh, Keeping It Real email in Ticolo. And I was asked today, this morning, to say a special hello to a big fan of the show. A young guy, and the father told me it's his son, it's a young guy, he said, I want you to say a special hello. Nikita! Nikita! So a special good night to a young fan of the show. And of course, everywhere to the north and the south and in between. In fact, I want to say a special good night, folks, to all of you in 758. And a special good night to those of you in 759. And those of you, not forgetting, in 760. And look, I just heard over the weekend that Grosile is now... 801. So I don't know. Masav. 801. The way things go in, I better get my own area code. Don't you think so? I get an area code for keeping it real. Send me an email. At info at keeping it real dot LC. Info at keeping it real dot LC. And tell me what area code we should have for. There you go. There's that. There's that. These guys working for their money, you know. 
Tell me what area code we should have for keeping it real, our own territory code, area code. Now, folks, let's, let's get into the action tonight. We know a lot of things have been said. Everybody jumping up and down. Those who don't know what to say, jumping up and down. Those who never said anything before, jumping up and down. Those who just there, just want to be in the groove. Jumping up and down. Well, sometimes, you know, you hear the most ludicrous things. Just makes your jaw drop. Sometimes you are amazed by the things some people say. And last week, for many people, was just such a moment in time. And I will call no names. And somebody out of St. Lucia says the volume S-U. And you know the letters after that. And last week was one of those times. I'll call no, no names, folks. But I'm sure by the end of it all, you'll figure out who it is. Because you must have heard it. But I don't know. I, uh, I'm not a voice detector. I have my own suspicions. But maybe you have your own suspicions too. But it was a circulating voice note. From WhatsApp and this individual it sounded it sounded like a man I don't know sometimes you have all this kind of strange people sounded like a man and he was going off he was going off and he was swearing and he was cursing at the government at the Prime Minister he swore at almost everyone. But what was really alarming about it all was what you could detect, what he didn't say. You could, you could feel it coming through. Whether it was your headphones, whether it was the speaker on the phone, you could, you could feel the anger, the rage, the wash zanimo. The irrationality, the lack of respect, the animalistic mannerisms were coming through. And, well, good night to St. Croix. Somebody says, what about St. Croix? Good night, St. Croix. Thanks for being in the house. And, um, I don't know if it's a clue, but, <laughs> Somebody said 547 for keeping it real. 547. And I don't know whether that individual subscribed to Breaking Glass somewhere or has some connection to Breaking Glass anyway. But I suspect that what is causing that? What's causing that for you? Huh? What's causing that for you? But what's causing that for him is maybe he stood too long or too many days or too many weeks or months in the blazing sun along the Castries waterfront. You know, some, you know, sometimes you see all kinds of strange characters walking up and down the Castries waterfront. And you know in St. Lucia what they say, if you get wet and then the sun hits you and then you get wet again. And I understand he had a mem like P.S. Power Sol, so so like a battle, la plica tobe, treat, treat, treat severely, treat severely. Bring, head gone, head gone, not thinking straight. Anyway, enough of that, enough of that. Recently, there has been a laundry list. Of pointers that have been well you know folks since this coronavirus this COVID-19 situation in St. Lucia and the rest of the world that the economy has taken quite a beating in St. Lucia in the region in the US in the UK in Europe Italy Spain Tupac you name it licks and of course I think everybody and their dog now knows that 
there have been issues with the government raising the usual monies that they raise when the economy was healthy and up and running. So a number of brain boxes, you know the opportunistic brain boxes have come up with a list. Say, well, if the government didn't give that to Cabot, you know, the Cabot loan from NIC, I come into that just now again. And if the government didn't do this with Ojo, and if they didn't do that with that hotel, and if they didn't pay five million or whatever for the Shocklands, whoa! Shocklands! Folks, you see when people don't know things, and they talk about transparency, how many people actually knew <coughs> there was anything with shock and lands during the previous administration? Hardly anybody knew. I didn't know. Never heard of it. <coughs> I don't know. Nobody knew. But all of a sudden, it's on a list that the government give away its illusion money and the 89 acres at shock 89 acres the previous administration had begun paying for it yeah and guess what happened get, make a guess you remember how the economy was back then how dr kenny anthony had said that you you dr kenny anthony that's right you could not borrow in that famous that interview I made famous that everybody never saw was only there for a fleeting instant on RSL with a few views. But that famous interview with Jadia Jean-Pierre where Dr. Kenny Anthony said, but something changed, something happened. They could not borrow. And then at the end of that little clip, he said, banks and lending institutions refused to lend to government and what they said was that you had to put your financial house in order. Well, if we can just extrapolate just a little bit and see no money to borrow, unemployment record high, top Kalte Bagai, the treasury, low, GDP, abate, it's like an ostrich, with all the tail feathers up in the air. Ah! You can understand that after a while of making some payments on that property, 89 acres, they couldn't continue paying. But St. Lucia had already paid so much money that when this government got into office, it realized that it would be a shame for all of this money to be sunk into a property and have St. Lucia lose it. And when this government got into office, the remaining payments plus interest came to $5.1, 5 dollars $5 million. Give or take five cents, two cents here and there, right? $5 million. But the thing about it is, you see, you have to ask yourself these questions when people talk about irresponsible. Who was irresponsible in this? And where was the transparency? Because I'm telling you it's 89 acres. But lo and behold, when you look at where that land was, then you begin to ask yourself some serious questions. And the thing is that that land now, since the government acquired it, is earmarked to be a housing development in shock. But hold your horse. Oh, horsey. Oh, horsey. Out of the 89 acres, guess what? 30 acres of that land are unusable they are unfit to be used to build anything you know why did anybody purchase that land sight unseen what was the purpose for buying that land was there some special arrangement 
Was there some special reason to buy those 89 acres of land at shock? Behind the Caribbean cinemas, folks, 40 acres are unusable because most of it is Kaye. Some of it is along the Shock River in that area there. There's a river around there. So it's a floodplain. It's useless. So in essence, all you have is 50-something odd acres. Almost 40% of the property is unusable. Can you, can you believe that? Can you believe that, folks? But no. Oh, no. Not on keeping it real. I keep it real with you. Over here, we keep it real. And I present the evidence. Drop the map. There we go. To the top. We don't want anybody to be confused. Go to the top of that. Now, folks. Hold that right there. Hold it there. You see that green circle there. That's the roundabout. That's the shock roundabout. Now, let me help you get your bearings. To the left of that, where you see that arrow in the, if you want to say, the southwest corner of that, that's the castries Gosley Highway going to town, going to Castries. The top arrow is going towards Grosley. That's the shock bridge, just a little bit to the top there. And to the right, where you have that arrow kind of to the east, that is going into, that's the Allen Busque Highway going into shock and to babono and to kabish and to you know now coming straight down south just for you to get your bearings you see kfc you know where kfc is that's right and mercury court where you have the bank and all those other business locations and in the bottom right you see caribbean cinemas that's the whole big car park now yeah hold on hold on hold on don't rush me don't rush me don't rush me and to the left, just to give you some more bearing, you see that long rectangular building in the top there on the left, highlighted in red. That is what? Mega J or whatever it's called? There you go. That's right. Now, I will have you look at the bottom right of your screen. You see some hashed red area there, outlined in red. Let's go up there. Let the people see that. That's the shock lands that the previous administration acquired, that they bought. In the name of St. Lucia. 89 acres. That area you see hashed off there in red in the top right of the screen. Unusable. Kaye. Okay? Those of you who don't know what Kaye is, call somebody and ask them. Cliffs. You see all the lots that are marked out there? Come down still. Come down. Let's go. Come down. Now you see at the bottom of that screen there, folks? In the middle at the bottom there, you see blue and hashed area. Tutsa, pas bon tout. Cliff. Ça pas bon. Can do nothing with that. To the right of that area, you see there's a little sliver like a long rectangular piece in a lighter aquamarine type of color. Turquoise, other kaidi. Pas bon. No good. To the top of that big area in the bottom there, you see along the, the river there. You see that area in red there along the waterway there. No good. Floodplain. Can I use it? Okay? So 40 acres out of a total 89 acre purchase. Unusable. Kaye or it's floodplain, whatever. Can you believe that, folks? So you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself whether anybody had a look at that property before. They put St. Lucia in the hole. Whether they had any any surveyors whether they had any professionals from the government ministry responsible for that to to assess and evaluate the quality of the lands that the government was dumping all of those millions for but people talk about transparency they want to distract you and tell you the government spent five million because otherwise we would have lost because we are defaulted. Uh, you know, there's more on the list. Ojo Labs, Cabot. You know, that's the hypocrisy of some people. I, I, I sat down a bit today, early this morning, 
decided to put some thoughts together and it just, it just started flowing. So I'd like to share them with you and see whether it wakes up some memories that you have that went to sleep for a little bit. Because you have to, from time to time, reawaken yourself, you know, find yourself in the St. Lucian context of things. So listen to this. They never cared about Amerindian burial sites or the environment when it was under the last administration and sold to raffles. But the moment Alan Chastney gets into office and the receiver, that's the person who sells property from a company or a person who's gone bankrupt, and the receiver sells the property to Cabot, there's a problem. They never gave much priority or transparency to DSH under the former administration. But as soon as Alan Shastney begins talking or began talks with DSH, it was the worst thing under the sun. They never cared about the Makote mangrove in Viewfort. But as soon as this administration began moving ahead with DSH, they suddenly developed love for that swamp. They never found anything wrong with spending $100,000 plus on a plaque at the opening of the OKEU, at the naming of the OKEU, naming ceremony. But the minute this government opens up that hospital, mal boudin pour you. Yep, mal, hol koyo pa bon. They couldn't get the Huanora International Airport redevelopment project underway. But as soon as this government got things on stream, mal tet, non-stop. They couldn't do anything about unemployment. It was spiraling out of control. But the moment this government got into office and lowered the unemployment figures, you constipé. That's right. They stifled the country with 15% VAT. But as soon as Chastney eased up, La Jijit point you. Poyo Kadi, an ugly, non stop diary. They raised vehicle license fees. But as soon as this government lowers those fees, you took Kafu. They had every excuse for not fixing the schools. But the minute Alan Chastney started doing it, quiz take them. They raised water rates 66%, imposed a desilting levy, but did nothing at the John Compton Dam. Yet, as soon as this government got the project underway, tut koyo kagwateyo. They allowed the roads to fall into the worst state of disrepair in living memory. But as soon as repairs began under this administration, your tut say engine fa. Pa engine, engine fa. They could not borrow because their financial house was not in order. But as soon as this government was able to borrow, nom kahele kon dis mewi madlen. Again, they could not borrow, but complained when local banks were willing to make loans to this administration under Prime Minister Alan Chastney. They complained there would be no money left to lend to the public. They complained when this government reported record tourist arrivals. They complained when this government announced record cruise ship arrivals. They complained when this government halted a random and unstructured laptop program and introduced the tablet 
program for secondary school students, which included on those tablets all books and material electronically, resulting in no heavy bags because there was no purchase needed for books. Every year, no purchase of books from Form 3 to Form 5. The work could be monitored by teachers, yet they complained when the laptops they provided had no class structure, had absolutely no follow-up, no instructions, no analysis. It was simply paralysis. They said St. Lucia was the worst prepared in the region to deal with the coronavirus. But then again, they also said St. Lucia's preparation was world-class. C'est Bougsala pas bon en tête. Unemployment figures. Let's look at that one there, folks. Because there's a lot of talk about unemployment, and I have to show you. Because the numbers don't lie. And this, there seems to be an aversion on the other side with numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. Pop that one up on that line that I showed you. There you go. There you go, folks. Persons who want work, the unemployed. Look at the years. You see that bar across there? In that, that little brownish or reddish highlight. Look at 2009. 15,448 unemployed. 2010, 17,604 unemployed. 2011, elections were held in November. 19,000. Look at the numbers for 2012. 20,267. Next, next year, 2013, 22,775. 2014, the next year, 23,961. 2015, 24,477. And then something happened in 2016 miraculously i wonder what that was unemployment began going down 22,562 in 2017 20,646 the last time it was at that level was in 2012 2018 down to 20,000 and in 2019 16,900 and something and saint lucia was poised at that time and the IMF said it, to a meteoric rise before COVID, before coronavirus. The numbers tell you something. And as testament to a stagnant economy, in fact, you know what? You know what? Show me the red page. I think that's IMF. IMF, the red. There you go. Folks, on the St. Lucia Labour Party page. You know, take it down. Take it down quick. Take it down quick. I just, I just tease you. Take it down quick. I just tease you there. I'll keep that for some, a little later in the show. I'm just teasing you. Because I want to shake up some people's several. Because, as I've always said before, one set of people in office is one set of rules, is one set of interpretation. But when another in office is a different... Bop, bop. <laughs> what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. It's the top of the hour, folks. We're going to take our first break. We'll be right back for some more information.
Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. So let's get into the meat of things tonight. Call your friend, call your auntie, call your granny, call your jabal, your girlfriend. Call who you gotta call. Keeping it real is hot and sizzling tonight. You could put some chicken or some redfish or snapper or barracuda or whatever you want. Just put it on your TV. It's so hot. It's gonna be barbecued, it'll be roasted, whatever you want to do with it. In no time. So instead of popcorn, you'll be snacking on some local stuff. Put some sweet potatoes there. Buy local. Peel your potato. Do it. Jete sa la TV, man. So hot. Potato chips, whatever you want to do. Cut up some plantain. There's somebody I know who loves plantain and tuna, man. Come to the Ofeo Mal. Like they do some people mal in a different way. So, let's talk about the NIC because so many people are talking about the NIC these past few days, these, in these corona times. Because for some people, the NIC is almost, if you're listening and you don't know what's going on, if you have not done your due diligence and analysis of the paralysis, you'd think that the NIC is some rogue organization. The NIC has been around since 1970 and I would like to encourage you folks. I'd like to give you the same information I get here so you can conduct your own analysis. Decide for yourself. I don't just come off here giving you stuff off the top of my head. No! Let you see the same things that I look at. I let you read the same things. I give you the information on screen or I direct you where you can find it. So if you would like to see about all the story about the NIC, which now is the National Insurance Corporation, and before that it was the NIS. Many of you know it as the NIS. And even before that, it was called the N. PF in 1970 it was formed National Provident Fund and oh you should have heard the things that they said I mean from people who were supposed to be the enlightened few in St. Lucia at that time from people who are like call from people who left St. Lucia and went to university outside of St. Lucia they tell St. Lucians they're telling St. Lucians, their brothers and sisters and friends, don't let him take the quarter or the dollar or the two dollars they were taking off your salary every month for that very same NIC we have over there on the waterfront with the glass on the front. That very same NIC, they're lauding. I know the NIC has money and it has all of these things and this, that, but I'm coming to that. So just so you know, you can go to St. Lucia, S-T-L-U-C-I-A-N-I-C, St. Lucia, Nick, N-I-C, dot org. And on there, at the very top of the page, unfortunately, I don't have it on there. You see, very easy to navigate, very user-friendly benefits, documents, about us. And I would encourage you on the first thing that you do, go to about us. And then under there, there's a sub-menu called... Well, good night to you, Mon Fortune. The corporation. And there's history. It tells you. Click on history. I'm doing it right now. If you want to do it, you have your phone or you have your laptop or you're in front of your computer as well. The history tells you when it was formed, you know, what it was meant to cover. All of that information. Old age benefits, survivor's benefits, invalidity benefits. And you scroll down and all of that information is there and everything. I'm not going to beat a dead horse on that. I'll let you do that work. But we all know that the NIC is a wonderful organization in St. Lucia. I mean, just as anything else, where people pay money, there's always, you know, back and forth disputes with some people, you know. But by and large, the NIC is doing wonderful things. And the NIC is controlled... It is governed by the NIC Act. 
And some people want you to believe that the NIC is just taking money and investing there and investing in Cabot and giving Cabot a loan. The government give Cabot a loan. Give me page 21 of the NIC Act. And I want you to zoom in on section 21. Is it 21 or 12? 12. 21. Yeah, I'm right. Investment of surplus monies. I want you to see that. See that? Let's go to subsection 2. 21 2. Subject to any general or specific direction of cabinet, the surplus monies in the fund may be invested in any of the following. Listen to this. The acquisition and development of land. The purchase, construction, and rental of buildings. C. Loans. D. Government bonds and securities. You hear that? Government bonds and securities. Government bonds and securities. So they could purchase bonds from the government. Because when you purchase bonds, there's an interest rate. So the NIC invests its money on behalf of the contributors, on behalf of the workers who pay into the fund and shares and debentures in bodies corporate. That means Wall Street, folks. Shares and debentures in bodies corporate. That means in companies, you can see, you, you see a company is financially stable. You see there's the opportunity for it. Because let me make something clear, folks. I'm sure many of you know this already. Or maybe some of you have not thought about it or you don't know. The monies that you pay, that you and I, that we all pay into the NIC is not enough to pay the benefits that we signed up for. You agree with that, right? Okay. The money that you deposit in the bank, that's right, the money you deposit in the bank is not enough. You earn interest. How does the bank give you interest if they just put the money in the safe? The bank has to invest in whatever, on Wall Street, in companies in the region, in utilities companies. The NIC does the same thing. It's a pension fund. And those of you who did business, those of you who did commerce, those of you who paid attention at school or listened to the news, hear about all these pension funds, particularly we are consumers of US TV, US cable TV primarily. Pension funds. They invest the monies to make. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Nothing's guaranteed. Look at the crash on Wall Street. Remember Bear Stones? NIC invested with Bear Stones. How much money they lost there? Did they lose? Ask the people who are talking about investment. So why can't, according to the Act, why can't the NIC, if the NIC, folks, the NIC is investing money, whether it's by a loan, whether it's in, in, in shares, in bodies corporate, it invests that money to make money so you can be paid. Simple. There's nothing complicated about that. So why can the NIC invest on Wall Street, invest out of St. Lucia, which is always risky, in which you can lose, in where there's nothing you just invest in, and if the company go under, if their stocks tank, there's nothing to hold on to. But in St. Lucia, the NIC gives a 10 million US dollar loan to Cabot, which is secured by property that Cabot bought and owns in St. Lucia, three times the value of the loan, 30 million US dollars. The property as security. Even if Cabot folds today, the NIC has that property. It, you, would you consider that to be a loss? I, I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't consider it to be a loss. So why is it that some people have a problem with that? For an enterprise that will bring employment to St. Lucia, that will allow people to send their children to school, that will increase the viability of St. Lucia, that will increase the tourists coming to St. Lucia. Somebody sent me from out of St. Lucia explaining some things to some St. Lucians is like beating a dead horse. But you have to repeat it. And for anybody to tell you different, 
anyone to try and convince you that this is not the case they're insulting your intelligence they think you're stupid they think you have no brains so let's move on a little bit now still on the NIC I'm leading into it some more let's go to the Facebook page of former president of the Senate Claudius Francis let's see that page from April the 24th last week if 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 my memory serves me correct if I can calculate every so often it comes time when we must simply sit back and allow a great moment a great moment to speak for itself Adrian Auger's contribution to the NIC's unemployment relief package at yesterday's Senate sitting is one such occasion class in 2020 is from the class of 74 so I guess Adrian Auger graduated from St. Mary's College if I'm right in 1974 so let's get a little snippet and I'm, I'm going to play you the whole thing it's not it's about a minute and a half two minutes something like that because I want you to listen you know because these days just as I said earlier we have all and sundry offering up solutions to problems solutions to issues solutions to things that were never problems because they precede them with but or if or what if or rumor has it or just highfalutin so let's hear from senator adrian Oji. roll it we now turn to the source of the funds where are these monies coming from is it from reserves and that question was asked on tuesday i did i listened to the debate for most of the while i did not hear a response i hope that there is a response and again my quarrel is at the nic the nic should have a response to this and it should be in the public domain by now because it is public money where do the resources come from is it from reserves is it from cash flow which I doubt, because at $90 million a year, that's only about $8 million a month. Is it coming from profits? Is that's it right, returns on investment? Pause that right there. Folks, let me try to oversimplify things here, because I'm hearing Adrian Oje, and a man of his, according to a friend of mine, a man of his calicotics, calibra and equilibrium, Adrian Auger can make a call. Adrian Auger at some point was, uh, what was he, a director or whatever of a bank in St. Lucia? Along one of the, along the main street in Castries. Adrian Auger could easily go to the NIC site. Adrian Auger could easily, because nobody thinks that Adrian Auger being in the Senate just dropped on his head and ended up in the Senate is because he's expected to have a certain level of capability and he could easily avail himself to the NIC Act which states quite clearly and of course I showed you just a show, show them again 21 21 2 what the NIC Act allows the NIC to do in order to raise funds to earn monies for its workers for the contributors to the fund every month money gets 5% from the employer 5% from the employee goes towards the fund Here, here's your answer adrian right there because the nic does not fish 
the board of directors don't go out on a boat and fish. They don't go looking for crabs. The NIC does not go running races to try and win a few dollars. They don't go on hot pepper eating contests. They don't go on hot dog eating contests. The NIC does exactly what the act allows them to do. So for Adrian Auger as a senator to ask that question in the House has me a little bewildered after I looked at it and I listened to him. Continue, continue playing that. Is it coming from profits? Is it returns on investments? This has to be disclosed. It has to be disclosed because each of those sources has a different set of future implications for subscribers. Okay, and pause, that that people we pause that there again. Adrian Auger was a director of a bank and he knows that every year or whatever the prescribed period is for whatever particular organization that there is a report, a financial report which states everything that he's asking there. So, although it sounds nice and fancy to ask those questions, that information is there. And if you go to the NIC website, the reports are there. And even if it wasn't there, I, I heard, uh, maybe some of you heard something before about actuary reports or whatever they call it. Did, have you heard about that? This past week, this word just came up. I don't know, but continue with Adrian Oje. And that's the only people we are accountable for, accountable to. If it is reserves, then we might well establish an unemployment fund that we've been talking about for the longest while. Because if the NIC is sitting on 80 or 100 million dollars that it can afford to give away on short term notice, then the unemployment fund that we have been debating and have not had the fortitude or forthrightness to establish all these many years, then we could establish it tomorrow. Okay, pause that because there. Is Adrian Auger suggesting that the NIC should have zero money? Because part of what the NIC does, pull up that page again for me, please. 21, 2. Part of what the NIC is allowed to do is C. And what, what's that? What, what's that five letter word? Loans. Loans. You can't give a loan if you don't have money. And the, lo the NIC doesn't give $25 loans. You give substantial loans so that you can make a return for your investors. And the investors are who? The contributors who pay into the NIC every month or every pay period. The NIC has to have money to give loans. Because it doesn't make any sense for the NIC to go and take a loan to give a loan. Somebody going to get shafted with doubled interest. So, again, if Adrian Oje had simply picked up the NIC Act, the answer to those questions, almost all of them, are right there. They're right there. But then again, let's finish it off still. Keep going, Adrian Oji. Then we might well establish an unemployment fund that we've been talking about for the longest while. Because if the NIC is sitting on 80 or 100 million dollars that it can afford to give away on short term notice, then the unemployment fund that we have been debating and have not had the fortitude or forthrightness to establish all these many years, okay, stop it. then we could stop establish it, it tomorrow. It. The NIC is not owned by a foreign government. It's not owned by Russia. It's not owned by France. It's not owned by Greenland. It's not owned by Argentina or Chile or Barbados. It's owned by St. Lucians. St. Lucia. And 
the 90 million or 100 million or 80 million that Adrian Auger is referring to is guess whose money? St. Lucian's. So if there is an exceptional time, a time when we've never seen anything like that, when St. Lucian's needs some support, and that the government, the government can go to the NIC, and the NIC can say, yes, that is valid. For their own contributors, the NIC is not, you see the same thing they're talking about? Oh, you'll give Kappa $30 million when NIC is given back to the very same people who contributed to the fund. So what the problem? When last did the NIC have to do that? These are exceptional times when you have to do things that you would not normally do. And if people want unemployment insurance, I'm sure it can be calculated, something can be worked out on how those deductions would be made, added to the deductions every month or every pay period. The NIC is actually giving back at the behest of the government to its subscribers, which is exactly what some of those satellites and those UFOs, the unidentified flying objects and the hackerlocks are talking about. And then, Millie, really, that's what you wanted the NIC to give money to St. Lucian's. Damn, damn it. I mean, it can never be good enough. It doesn't matter what you do with those jokers out there. You go so, you say it's there. You go there, it's there. Bunch of hypocrites. That's what they are. Bunch of hypocrites. So, enough of that. But, but you see, <laughs> how much more you have left on that day? A few seconds? Finish it off. Finish it off. Because what we are talking about here today is an unemployment benefit. So instead of creating an economic disaster fund, or whatever we propose to call it, create the unemployment benefit because that is what you are trying to achieve. Okay. You know, earlier I talked about people having all the biggest ideas and nothing's wrong with nothing's wrong with having big ideas. But when you see certain individuals all of a sudden want to wax political or wax philosoph and Adrian Auger said that this unemployment insurance thing has been talked about for a while or Adrian Auger was under the previous administration, the chairman of what? The Vision Commission. The Vision Commission. Did the Vision Commission see the necessity for an unemployment insurance at the NIC? Did they have the vision to see that perhaps? Because he said it had been talked about. And if they saw it, and during their tenure or their term of being in panel, being in office, whatever you want to call it, being constituted, did the Vision Commission, at the end of it all, or at some particular point, did they ever, ever submit a report on what they saw, on what their vision was? So let's hear, uh, in fact, he was also head, I believe, of OPSR, what's it? Office of Private Sector Relations. So, the question is, would, would that be something that would come up in the private sector of concern for, I, I don't know, I'm just asking. I'm asking for a friend, no, I'm asking for me. I'm asking for you all. So the mystery that Adrian Auger has about 
the NIC and the social support intended to be paid out of its funds and not knowing what had been said before let's hear what Prime Minister Alan Chastney said two days before Adrian Auger and a number of days before Claudius Francis could lord Adrian Auger but totally ignore what Prime Minister Alan Chastney said Rule number one. The act has been very kind to St. Lucia, and particularly the NIC. And I want to make it very clear, Mr. Speaker, that all the reports, the financial reports of NIC, indicate that it is, if it's not the most, it's one of the most stable, stable pension funds in the Caribbean. NIC St. Lucia. With over $2 billion of assets and close to $300 million in cash reserves. So where is the $100 million coming from? It's coming from their reserves, Mr. Speaker. It's coming from their reserves. And the NIC, and members on the opposite side would have known, because they got to see the actual report that was done in, 20, in 2015. So every five years, there's an actual report. So the next actual report that's due to be presented to the House will be in June of 2015, Mr. Speaker. Of, two, of 2020, my apologies. Of 2020. And members on the other side are fully aware, Mr. Speaker. And that's why there's sometimes one questions the strategy. We, oh yes, we support, but the but always comes in. And what is the intention of the but? Is to create uncertainty, fear. As if there are not safeguards already built into the NIC. And the rules between the government and the NIC have always been clear. The NIC board is the one that makes recommendations to the minister. And before anything comes, so the regulations are designed by the technical staff at the NIC, approved by their board, and passed on to the minister to bring it to cabinet to approve and to bring it to the house through an SI for it to become an order. That's how it's always worked. This is no different. All of a sudden come up and question the wording, always the wording and whether this, all these things have existed it's not the first time that something like this is being attempted to do. The idea that you need to have a sunset clause. Why? There is a board that has technical staff. The technical staff reviews how much they, are, they, can, they, can, they can afford to, to pay out. And that's what the controls are. Minister of Finance, in my case, is not involved in that. Those are details that are done by the NIC. And what the NIC has indicated that looking at the actuarial report and on the advice of the actuaries, that instead of the fund coming to an end in 2050, that the fund can come to an end in 2049. Okay. And if it were to end in 2049, it would leave a reserve of $100 million. So that became the limitation. Okay, folks, that's one. So let's go to the next clip of Prime Minister Alan Chastney when he's talking Last week, Tuesday, two days before Adrian Auger, who mysteriously didn't hear, and who former president of the Senate, Claudius Francis, did not acknowledge, Prime Minister Alan Chastney about unemployment. We have been in discussions, Mr. Speaker, about broadening the scope of the NIC <laughs> to also include healthcare insurance. And I think that one of the things like exist in Barbados is the discussion of creating now an employment insurance program um, so that when disasters like this happen that persons know that they can't just be let go and two weeks later that they have no income coming and to provide the workers with that level of protection and that certainly would be until a time comes where NIC is broadened or a new agency is established 
to create um, an employment insurance fund, but I think it's time that we start looking at that um, over, the, over, the, over the quickest time possible. But, but you know, the NIC has had some glaring examples of what it has invested in. But before I get to that, you know, all of a sudden, we have, well, not all of a sudden, we, we've been observing it for a while. You have doctors who planes politicians, but they're not announcing that they're politicians. You have former politicians playing that they, they are the brightest spark around, but when they were in office, they couldn't make the changes that they're crying for now. They have all the bright ideas now. They write books, how to govern in a small state. All of these people who pop up, you know, play independent, but they're not really because, I mean, you know, in St. Lucia already, you can't hide too far because people see the patterns of behavior. They notice the associations. They notice the similarity in the talk and all the talk starts at the same time with the same certain set of people. But for some reason, mysteriously, Silent. Folks, you all ever heard of the Castries car park right there at Conway? NIC monies. You all ever heard of Blue Coral? Oh my gosh! <laughs> that ain't coral, huh? That's rocks! Because that thing has been a vampire, a parasite on the NIC. And under whose whose stewardship? Somebody who was just announced as a candidate today, former member of the previous administration, Emma Hippolyte. The same NIC Act applied. She knows it did. In fact, she was she has been considered to be among many people one of the toughest that have ever been. In fact, it was under her that the age of retirement was increased to what 75 or 70 or whatever it was hmm? the iron hand of emma but you know again the evidence in the reports and i would expect that persons who are versed enough and who have been around enough know how to get information because it's all there on the website so let's go to blue coral 2005 one and we're going to where are we going to the top of that page 21 yeah 21 is that is that what is that it or no that's that's number two give me the other one well give me the other one yeah 21 on top let's go to the top is it two, 2005 2000 and yeah 2005 annual report at the top there under 21 it says events after the balance sheet date on september the 30th 2005 that's 15 years ago eh? blue coral limited remember whose administration blue coral limited signed an agreement with Lawrence Associates, valued at uh, $14.3 million for the extension, renovation, and refurbishment of Blue Coral. Let's go to the other one. And that one's at the bottom. Number 21 again. I guess it continues over to that page, right? Yeah. Events after the balance sheet date. On August the 10th, 2005, Bank of St. Lucia Limited approved a 15-year loan of $6.2 million with an effective rate of interest of 8% to Blue Coral Limited. Now, folks, everybody and their uncle remembers what was going on with Blue Coral, the, the Coco Mayoc that it was in, how long it sat in Castries on Bridge Street as an eyesore. You remember that, don't you? Don't be forgetful. So let's go to Blue Coral to the, from the 2012-2013 the 
Financial report. Let's go to that. Aba. At the bottom. You have that there for me? Wait, last line. Can you zoom in on that a little bit? The company's total liabilities and shareholders deficiency by the end of the review period. Now that was 2000, 2012, 2013. Who was in office then again? The company's total liabilities and shareholders deficiency by the end of the review period amounted to 21.1 million dollars a call blue coral seven years ago okay so let's not pretend as if blue coral has been uh, i'm sorry nic has been hunky dory and they have not been examples of bad investments that they were allowed under the act to take things go bad but then people make bad investments and certain people for whatever reasons made some bad investments with the nic whether it was accidental or foolish or whatever that's that's investing that's investing so to make it seem as if the nic giving a loan to cabot or investing in this and as a matter of fact i would suggest that all of these people who want to bomb and rag on the nic i would suggest that they actually find out how many loans the nic has given to local businesses how many companies in saint lucia that the nic has invested in how many companies in the region that the nic had invested in and remember remember that blue coral the intention was to get a what a supermarket from barbados to take the top floor at blue coral because at the time at the time certain people were upset and didn't want michael chastney and his group of companies you want me to tell you the rest to have a monopoly in the market in saint lucia in the supermarket business in saint lucia and blue coral was all part of trying to squeeze that 2.1 million loss I, was it well i missed a, a dot there well in the report somebody was correcting me there in the report on the nic website report for the period july 2002 to june 2012 to june 2013 it says 21 21 million 183,585. so that's there it is thank you so much so that is not my error that may be an error on the nic site or maybe you have a little mistake yourself there but i'm only reading from the information provided from the site i keep it real folks keep it real i don't play with that when i'm dealing with these things there i have it before me no dog back so we're gonna take a break i come back with a little thing for you and that, that red photo okay 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 i just got a warning here make sure that i shout out my friends in cicero and latok road and of course ancillary and masque and everywhere else good night to the fans at latok road and good night to my special especially fan at cicero we'll take a break and we'll be right back well welcome back folks welcome back to the final segment of keeping it real drop that for me you ready you're not ready yet you're catching me by surprise man but anyway i want you folks during last week buddy of course 
was giving his interpretation of an IMF chart and that chart was indicating the progress of the economy of St. Lucia how well it was doing and I want you to get out your calculator if you still have one or pull out your phones I'll give you some numbers to add up here okay now let's see that IMF report let's see that IMF report you have it that um, graph you don't have it yet it's um, it's called IMF not that one the other one it's called IMF no not that one it's the one with the zigzag yeah there are so many files in there folks there are so many files in there the guys need to do some special action you don't have it you have it you don't okay all right let's not let's not okay so okay we missed that one getting it on okay no problem folks well buddy you have it okay great put that up for me please there you go make sure you can zoom in on that a little bit make it a little wider okay 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 we have the years at the bottom and you see there folks the red line forget about the inflation you see the red line there it indicates the ups and downs the GDP the, the, the performance of St. Lucia's economy and you see there one thing that Buddy was concentrating on on 2019 you see a precipitous drop or a steep drop in that red line folks that's because of COVID that's projections right because of covid and if you go to the imf website leave that up there or if you search in your favorite search engine google bing yahoo whatever imf report on saint lucia you'll see the outlook that the imf had in late last year about where it expected saint lucia to go and this does not reflect that but some people believe that if you have one year that was fantastic and another year that fell below that that the world is ending but that's not so and this is just a convenient interpretation for body because it suits his purpose so let me give you here folks Come back here now I will even write it down with you okay I have the GDP real GDP growth for the years from 2011 to 2019 so the SLS forget about 2011 because elections was in November so the SLP came in in 2012 write it down for me minus 0.1 percent growth 2013 was minus 2.0 percent growth 2014 was positive 1.3 percent growth 2015 was 0 0.1 percent growth 2016 now since the elections was called half of the year we're going to give them half well anyway 3.4 percent right 2016 3.4 percent growth 2017 3.5 percent growth right so the first year 2016 was uwp government elections stay with me 2018 was 2.6 percent growth and so far for 2019 1.7 percent positive growth eh no recession no nada positive growth just not as much as the previous year but we still moving ahead don't try to confuse people because you got three percent positive and the next year you get two percent positive doesn't mean that you you sink in doesn't mean that the country is in disarray doesn't mean that you can't get loans in fact the government got loans so but people like to mal the several of people mal the facts to discombobulate your mind so let's add okay 
minus uh, let me, let me, let's do it together minus 0 0.1 right plus minus 2 uh, what's it 2.0 right 2.0 plus 0.1 right and let's give them half half elections 1.7 plus 1.7 percent equals what minus 2.02 minus 2.02 that's how badly the economy did over the term they were in office nobody's fault you all could have stayed in longer but that's what happened whilst you were there and what is important is the period of time you were there that's the calculation and this government has been in office what just about four years now so let's do it let's do let's do the maths 1.7 that's half of 2016 1.7 plus 3.5 plus 2.6 plus 1.7 there now mind you there was no negative growth none at all whoa i'm doing something wrong here uh oh no 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 let's 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 redo that folks 1.7 1.7 plus hey plus 3.5 well, you know it's live tv plus 2.6 2.6 plus 1.7 what that adds up to 9.5 now look at that minus 2.02 abate below the line and this government over the period of time since elections has grown the economy by 9.5 percent 9.5 percent but hold on one get ready for the number get ready because i'm going to that soon 9.5 percent compared to minus 2.02 percent but some people body included want to jump on that 1.7 and hey, the government why, 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 think going down look at that line it's in the totality in the totality so let's go now to that red page the SLP page and let me show you some interpretation there if you look on the right St. Lucia Labour Party February the 12th or is it 13th for the 12th 13th that's right I can see 2016 2016 look on the left in the red they were boasting the IMF executive board concludes 2015 article 4 consultation with St. Lucia that's when the IMF people come down and they look at your books and they check to the guy and they tell you what your performance is now look at what what they they tout in on the back of strong tourism inflows and lower oil prices the St. Lucian economy has returned to growth after experiencing in whose words listen to it folks after experiencing a recession in 2012 and close to zero growth it was close to zero it was so close it was below zero close to zero growth in 2013 growth reached 0 0.5 percent in 2014 you see what they're boasting about half a percentage half a percentage is like pull out the billboards Call out the, the army, call out the navy, call out the marines, have them march, big parade, doo -doo 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 -doo. growth, 0.5%. But this government is performing remarkably well and was poised by a report from the very same IMF that St. Lucia was poised for takeoff because of the massive projects that were on stream to start this year and then of course we all know the coronavirus but the in the construction industry has opened up as of today yesterday whatever so we'll see how things progress 
and see what happens in St. Lucia and what comes on down the line. But you know, of course, the usual, the usual. So let's go to earlier on today. Despicable again. Despicable again. Roll that. Put it on. The photo I sent you. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Look at the right. And we, uh, the, the governor general addressed or gave his throne speech representing the queen remotely. Look to the right. You see those empty chairs there? The SLP refused. They failed to. They did not attend. And every year they do the same thing. Men who have been elected into office to represent the people of St. Lucia, their constituents. And if you tell me this is not, and especially in a time like now, COVID, coronavirus, when we all must be together, when the very SLP themselves, not any hacker lacks, not any satellites, not any UFOs, the SLP opposition themselves have said, let's not politicize this whole time. Let's not politicize things. What the hell you see happening there? It's not politics. For something worse than little kids in a schoolyard. Embarrassment to the country. Embarrassment to your Zapaka hot. I mean, but then you see the whole behavior. Don't want to shake the prime minister's hand. Thin skinned. Can't take nothing, can't say nothing. But want to talk about crime in St. Lucia, about dispute resolution. You'll show no example of any such behavior, any such capability, any such capacity. We're going over time tonight. Send the bill. We're going over time tonight. Because I want your calls. Put up the number. Put up the number. 450. 0777. I want you to tell me what you think about the nonsense that happened today in our House of Parliament. And these same, these same jokers swore allegiance to the Queen earlier on in the session before the Governor General had to present his throne speech. And then, when the Governor General has to present the throne speech representing the same person that you say you, you, you bear allegiance to. You fala, you walk out. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. First caller tonight. Good night. Good night. Hello. Good night, Robert. Good night, sir. Yeah, um, I, I, I was actually watching the news tonight. And I, and I, heard, the, and I heard the leader of the opposition, and Joaquin. Joaquin Henry. Go ahead. Think you, about they call repo, repo, yeah, repurposing the loans which the government has, and I and I need to ask you a question. I'm sure most solutions have taken loans from the bank for the mortgages, of course, and to buy cars and whatnot. Mm -hmm. When you do take a loan to buy a car, does the bank actually write that payment to you? Oh, or no. to the, I wish they would. Also, the company you're going to buy. That. That's right. They write it to the car company. They write it to whoever. When you take when you take a mortgage, when you take a mortgage, do they give you the full amount for that house costing two, three, four hundred thousand dollars? No. When you when you build in a house, no, they don't. Okay. You, did they give you an advance? And depending on certain stages of the building, then you would get some more money from them and whatnot. That's I didn't. Right. I never knew that when you take millions of dollars for. A, for a particular project that you could take that money and use it for something else. I, 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 know, I don't know how that can know, be I done. Expect, I expect the leader of the opposition to appear. Sure. And I expect Joaquin Henry to know better than that. What? Are they trying to just keep on fooling St. Lucians? You cannot repurpose those big loans. In fact, in fact, in order to get those loans, you would have had to spend so much money to get those loans with lawyers and other all kind of different things you have to do to have Philip Pierre and Joachim Henry come in 
on national television and even fooling some reporters, you know, because some reporters were asking those same questions. I mean, I'm even ashamed that some of our, our, our reporters... Oh, the political actors, you mean? You know, you know, you know, it is so stupid. It is so stupid, man. You know, these kind of things, your show is not what makes me mad, you know, <laughs> but these kind of things makes me mad, but I'm going to keep it real. Good night. Okay, thank you very much, caller. Thank you very much. Folks, the number to call, 450-0777. Give me a call and let's go back to that photo again. Folks, this, this, I mean, this has to be a cruel joke. Self-flagellation. Because as grown men, number one, as representatives of the people, for the world to see, people who want to be examples to our young people, to the population at large, that people can resolve differences. Look at this there, another glaring example of abject stupidity. And I say that with absolutely no reservations. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good night. Hello, my back. Yes, sir. Good night. You're on the air. Everything you said, I agree with you. I like to. I like. To, I, I. I like your your program. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. But what I want you to tell uh, Prime Minister and Guy Joseph for me, please, mm -hmm. release the le release the liquor store. Well, you know, I wanted to talk about that tonight, you know, but I'm out of time. <laughs> you want them? You want them to release the alki? So let me ask you a question, caller. Let me ask you a question. In fact, let me make a statement because you, you want to say anything else? Yeah, because my fruit is dry and I want to... Um, but sun you sun have water fruit. at your home, of course. Huh? You have water at your home. <laughs> <laughs> but you're laughing, you're not answering me. Yes, I have water at my home. But, that that home. but you know water is like better for you fruit. than alcohol, eh? I want the liquor... I want but the, that can cl that the, the water will the cleanse out your liver. The white rum, eh? Huh? Especially the white rum. You like white rum? Yeah. <laughs> so, try, try, to tell you, try to tell them to do something about it. Oh, I'm sure somebody will tell him. I'll tell All him right. too. Alright, good. Thank okay, you. thank you very much for calling. Folks, you know, I mean... I mean... What are we, I'm, I'm not knocking the caller. But sometimes we have to put the responsibility or the blame... We have a call. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Yes, good night, Bobby. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Um, listen, man. You know, it is like, even if you put, you give people a book to read, is understanding what you read is the key. Now, remember Philip J. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can recall, but I can recall many times. In the house, in public, you've been saying, when the UWP government removed, removed all the policies they had in place for this economy to grow. Remember? I'm not hearing you too clearly, caller. So I said, I can recall Philip yeah. J. Pierre on numerous occasions yeah. saying that um, the UWP administration has removed all the policies they found there to yeah. make this economy grow. Yeah. I can recall that. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking, if the, this government removed the policies, how were we able to go? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, maybe that's a question you need to ask Philip J. Pierre. Because mm -hmm. Philip J. Pierre has made, in recent times, let's just say this year, a number of ludicrous statements. Mm -hmm. A number of crazy program, statements that have defied, that have defied any you. logic. You know, but um, that, but um, there again, uh, um, um, uh, no, they, mm -hmm. then again, I mean, the red is, is on the wall. We knew where this country was heading to, and lo and behold, we got into this situation. But we have a good team, a good leader, mm -hmm. and we will rebound. Mm -hmm. We must rebound. But you know what? We have a praying man. And that's very important. Good night. Thank you very much. And folks, I just want to correct something there. <clears throat> um, earlier I said um, 
the retirement age was moved from 70 to 75. It was just a little, um, it was incorrect. It was actually 60 to 65. You know, sometimes you, you're trying to multitask and you're reading one thing and you read a different set of numbers and you say something else. So 60, let me correct myself, 60 to 65. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Robert. Hi. I know that you brought up a number of points um, in your discussion this evening, but I will not dwell on many of them, just two of them. Uh -huh. One of them is with regards to uh, your international airport yeah. um, redevelopment. I am thinking that when I travel, mm -hmm. I don't think about the airport. I think about the destination. Mm -hmm. I am more concerned about my vacation in that destination. Mm -hmm. I know that a loan has been accessed for the redevelopment of Urano International Airport. Somebody just mentioned or alluded to that a while ago. Mm -hmm. But can't that airport be down, downscaled? Because there will be a high maintenance cost. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, a, you, you talk about downscale. Mm -hmm. The redevelopment of the airport is something that didn't just happen or was not decided out of the blue. I know. Right. The, the reason for the redevelopment of the airport was based on the numbers. And in fact, every, you, you don't build an airport for the next five years. So if you look at the complaints that had been coming out of the Huonora International Airport for years, for a very long time, mm -hmm. and particularly on weekends and as our tourism numbers have continued to hit record numbers, we've seen that the airport cannot handle it. So if you're going to build, and with the push that St. Lucia has, the advertising pre-COVID, right? And still the intention is to continue that, but we still have to go with the flow. We've already taken the loan. There's nothing else that you could really do. You, if you go to the bank, let, let me tell you something. If you go to the bank and you get a loan to build a house, mm -hmm. and you put your land, you have some land in Chozel or wherever as security, and you lose your job, which allows you to continue paying for that, or things change, you're still there with the bank. You're no, not you, going to tell no, the bank no, now. No, no, you can but, go to the bank. Well, I'm making an analogy to you. Renegotiate and rediscuss. Right. Well, I'm, right. But, but there, there are going to be of course there outcomes to of that that are going to be, be negative to you. Of course there will be. Right. So, but nevertheless, nevertheless, with St. Lucia, mm -hmm. we still have to be poised to take advantage of what contributes at least 60% of our GDP in St. Lucia. And if you see right now, what, 13,000 people are out of jobs be connected to the tourism industry? No, 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 let's not go there. Let's remain at the airport. What I'm saying is... No, yes, no, no, oh, yes, but, but that is... Caller, caller, We will caller. be getting taxes. We will be get, um, getting income from tourist arrivals. But what I'm asking is, does the size of the airport... Well, okay, I'll answer that for you, yes. No, next, it doesn't. Next point, it doesn't next point. increase the number of tourists. Caller, the previous administration and this administration had no problem with the size of the airport. So let's yes, go to your next point. The previous Caller, let's go to the next point. A PPP. Caller, well, okay, it, it's right, not about PPP or loan. Okay, the all right, the okay. development of the airport is basically the same. All I want to say is that a world-class airport will have world-class maintenance costs. And the second point I wanted to mention was with regards 2016 unemployment. You were quick to pick up the positive of the growth and decide to share it half half when. Okay, call, okay, I'll give you all then. I can give you yeah, all. It's well, not going I to mean, make too much I mean, of a difference. I mean, when you're planning stuff, it doesn't materialize immediately. And so, the same way with the decrease in the unemployment in 2016 it wasn't because as soon as caller uh, the caller, administration caller let me make something clear to you i know you 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 I'm you listening. want to make it seem as if this changes this is the formula or the analysis or the numbers or how they're calculated for all administrations it's not one set for one and different. So no, if, no, no. if it you, remains... You're the one contradicting yourself because I, even when you spoke about the land, but okay, you said um, NIC purchased and or invested in the 
white elephant of the car park and um i said blue, blue coral. coral these two buildings mm -hmm. that was bad investment i agree mm -hmm. so why should we go into another bad investment we need to try to which what is the bad investment i'm sure Cabot will be how how do you investment. come to that conclusion because Color. we already have a golf course in the north that is already in jeopardy a jeopardy of what in terms of water to caller caller you you need to um watch a few of the old shows where i address no no no, no no i'm watching your shows you know I okay watch your so you must have fallen quickly. asleep or missed that part okay, listen. listen you also spoke about purchasing um um land and and you you spoke about the land at shock and and it has all of these um kaye and whatever yeah. whatever all of these things it's like you're contradicting yourself how also but you also spoke about bad investments so i'm saying purchasing the land at shock the land at shock is not nic no 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 the government purchasing the 89 mm -hmm. acres and 30 of it is kaye and so mm -hmm. on i'm saying mm -hmm. yes that's a bad investment i agree but we continue what, was it an investment caller because all of that was there to see it wasn't a surprise so you you wondering what due diligence was done on that property before it was purchased okay so i'm saying in the same way we have to look at cabot and do due diligence as well we have a golf course in the north yes. and we already experienced but, but caller i just them. said to you you tried to dismiss what i said to you no i'm not dismissing i'm listening well you, you did because i said to you on a previous show and you said you watched the show on a previous show i dealt with that exact instance as a matter of fact sandals mm -hmm. in the north which has a golf course mm -hmm. you know that sandals that yes, not, yes, does not yes. use wasco water you know mm -hmm. that right i know that and then persons were complaining about shit water i have heard about it persons complained that they were getting rash and so on anyway okay. the final but thing i want hold on hold on mm -hmm. you know that cabot is currently in negotiations with wasco to run their own water mains to the treatment plant so that the water that will be used to treat or to water the lawn does not come from wasco's portable or drinkable water system i know that okay. i know that all right okay and the final thing i wanted yes. to say as well is it is very convenient for um us to uh, uh, um always go back to the father of the nation which i i know he has done a lot of work to bring st lucia away it is today because he indeed spent 30 years in office. Why isn't this administration taking the mantra that he left about stop the borrowing? Why? Yes, it is always good to go back to Compton. Compton did this. I agree. Compton was also a labor in the Labor Party. But he left because he didn't like the ideas and he moved on. No problem. Independent and then to UWP. So you're, you're saying, caller, that Compton did not borrow? I'm not saying he didn't borrow. I just, you know, don't tell me what I'm saying. You I just said you, that. He kept saying, stop the borrowing or, or stop borrowing so much. So I'm saying, in as much as we like all of what Compton did, he's the father of the nation. We always go back to him when we want conveniently why don't we stop all that borrowing why don't we stop all that borrowing and squandering because that is why we are in the jeopardy we are in now it is like you know but as a what's, head of what's your the jeopardy we're in now what's the jeopardy that covid has not even started okay so so and let me ask you a question in a financial jeopardy yeah, it's like so, you but, but caller but caller that is hmm. unfair no it's because not unfair. No, no it is unfair because St. Lucia is not unique in that situation. No, no, the no, Caribbean, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Caribbean is not unique in that situation. I in know fact, we are not unique, but fact, I'm telling you, we have been doing in, so in well fact, with that COVID. In, in fact, the, COVID the world virus has not even hit us yet. Caller, are, are, you, are you calling for it to hit no, us? No, 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 I'm not calling, but I'm saying, let's say you are the head of your household, Norbert. You are the head of your household and you have the finances of your so household. So what would you suppose? What would you suppose? Because, because there's a lot of talk about, about tourism mm -hmm. and agriculture and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So tourism is the hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not only, not only the oh, hotels. Hold on. Hold on, hold, the hold, the hold on. Slow down. Relax. You understand what I'm saying? It's not only the hotels. Hold on. Slow down. It, it, relax. Tourism is the hotels. That's what, just like people say, all toothpaste is called gates. No, no, no. Or, or, or dishwashing. I will not say that. I will Caller, not caller, you understand what I'm saying. Stop resisting. 
or you'll be put under arrest. I know, I right. know. That's why I'm, okay. I'm trying to be calm because I don't want you to shut me up. Right. The thing is that if you look at the hotels, the accommodations, everything else around tourism, so we'll say the hotels, taxis, entertainment, all of that which depends on tourism. Farmers. Fishing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Buses. Hold on, hold on. Now, let me make my point. Right I'm now, I'm listening. because we talk about, oh, let's push agriculture. I you think agriculture, so. you think I agriculture. So. I didn't say so. Hold, no, I'm saying so. Okay. Because that's always been the talk no, about agriculture. Been, oh, that we're too dependent on tourism. So let's make St. Lucia more dependent on what? No, we agriculture. Have both. We have to embrace both. Oh, I agree, but hold on. We all know that this has been the argument. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds because we're getting more calls. Mm -hmm. We all know that has been the argument. No, you're taking the 30 seconds, you know. I am. Your final thoughts then? Yes, my final thoughts is when tourism is one of the main stream um, um, sectors, why didn't we think of connecting the road from Grosile to Denry? Because the tourists keep complaining about going through the city, wasting, I mean, yes, it's true, they can't stop and shop. But when they were uh, tired from the airport, which they don't even spend much time in. It's just touch and they want to get out and get to the airport, get to the hotel room, sorry. Somebody said they just lost me. I don't know. Are we still on? Yes, we, 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 met, we lost you a little, but you're on now. We're you're back on. on. You're okay. on. I can see you. You're on. Okay. So I'm saying the tourists don't want to spend time at the airport. They want to get to the hotel room and begin enjoying. Right, Colin, you have 10 seconds. Yes, so we need to get the Denry Grosile Road going so the tourists can get to their hotels faster without okay. wasting time in traffic. All right. Thank you for calling, caller. Thanks yes. for keeping it real. Got to take, we have, you have what, six calls holding? Okay. Um, I just want to read something to you quick. Hold, hold, hold those calls. I just want to read something to you quick. The oath or the, the pledge of allegiance in the house today, be it resolved that this honorable house pledge its sincere loyalty and allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to His Excellency the Governor General for onward transmission to Her Majesty the Queen. Honorable members, uh, honorable members, the question is that this honorable Senate pledge its sincere loyalty and allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to His Excellency the Governor General for onward transmission to Her Majesty the Queen. I now put the question, as many as are of that opinion say aye, as many as are of the contrary opinion say no, say no. I think the eyes had it and the eyes had it there today. We have another call? Yeah, okay. You ready for me? Okay. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, oh. uh, what, I'm, what I want to ask, so many people are unemployed and they, they think it's hard because of the sickness. Why did the Labour Party want to stop the little construction project that we're going to put food on the table for the lower class people? Which was it? If there is a couple in a house, both of them working, bills are being shared amongst them. But there are a lot of people that are out of work. So probably one is in the house and then the other will go to work through the construction. But then this, the Labour Party still have a problem with that. Why do they want to stop the project? Well, we cannot have no party, we cannot go nowhere, we have we really this food. Yeah. So why do they why they find the project is a problem? Well, I, why I, do they find progress? Well, caller, I don't know. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thanks for calling the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for keeping it real. I don't know. Maybe you need to ask Philip J. Pierre or his band of merry men because he's the boss right now. So I don't know. We have another one. Yeah. Okay. So so folks, as you can see. The situation here in St. Lucia is not anything unique to St. Lucia. Everything has been turned upside down around the world. The U.S., yesterday 700 plus people 
died as a result. We go 10 more minutes on the bottom of the hour? Might as well just round it off. Okay. <clears throat> people are dying out. People are still dying. Barbados is not any different to St. Lucia. is not any different, although we have had no deaths. But the measures that have to be put in place have to be put in place. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good evening, sir. Yes, how are you? How are you, Mr. Williams? I'm doing fine. Let's go. You, you look good on TV, boy. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. thank you so much. Um, are you willing to take a pay cut, sir? Am I willing to take a pay cut? Yeah. I will do whatever it takes there right now. And that, that has been decided for everyone. But you know what? Nobody wants a pay cut. Nobody wants any changes to the monies that they come in. But as a result of what's happening in the world, as a result of what was identified before it really hit and the effects were felt here, this prime minister, this government and others in the region began having talks with the bank and other financial institutions and persons who have loans and persons who have commitments, with, for example, with Wasco, with Lucilec, with rent and whatever, the, well, let's deal with the banks. The banks have offered moratoriums up to six months that right. you can right. be you given a break in the event that there has to be some cutbacks if you have layoffs. And all of this is understanding because the banks didn't just sit down and say, let's give everybody a moratorium. The right. banks right. understand right. the situation right. in the world today and in St. Lucia and everywhere else and are willing to play their part in the recovery effort. Yeah, but the crazy has don't say anything. Well, have you spoken to your credit union? Give them a call. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm that, sure. Not, you're not saying anything, so. Well, I well I can't answer that for you because I'm not an expert in that field. But it, so how can they what, not what, say what, anything? What, 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 what does what that mean? They not say anything. Hello. What 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 ex, what field are you an expert? What field am I an expert in? In life. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not an anyway, expert. I'm not an anyway. expert. In, in the banking field, but I can tell you what measures have been put in place. And if you do not have a response, you said they, they're not saying anything. They, they have to say something I one way or the other. Not saying anything. Speak, speak with your credit union or speak with some other authority in the banking industry and find out what's going on or call your rep. Okay? Rep? Call your rep. Okay. Thank no you very much, caller. Thanks for keeping it real. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, good night to the fans in Rodney Bay. I just got a message that I forgot them. So good night to those in Rodney Bay. Anything else? Okay, so I want to touch on the caller who we have another call. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hello, good night. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you for calling. Let's go. I want to ask you, uh, uh, the loan for the airport, has that been approved? Approved where? From the, where, whichever institution they're taking the loan from. Oh, all of that has been signed already, caller. Now, earlier you said that the banks are willing, the banks are understanding the situation yeah. right now, in the auditorium and so on. Yeah. So if I'm building a house, if I have a house, yeah. and I want to put furniture in it, I go to the bank, I say, I want $50,000, and they buy furniture, etc. And the bank say, okay, they're giving me the loan, we sign off and everything. Mm -hmm. And then, before the loan is, dis is dispatched, then, or dispensed, the house burns down. And I go back to the bank, I say to the bank, well, the house burned down. I will no longer be able to use that money to buy furniture. Can I use that money to rebuild my house? Can the bank re renegotiate with me? And well, I, well caller, to be quite honest with you, I don't know. That is something you have to speak with your banking officer about. I don't know what terms well, you have. I'm, I don't know I'm what the bank that, policies are. So yeah, I, I really can't that, make a statement on that. I'm saying that in light of the airport redevelopment. Mm -hmm. Because if the loan has been approved, etc., and we see that cannot be given priority right now. Can the government renegotiate with the bank and say, well, look, we cannot give this priority right now. We want to finish the, 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 the hospital instead, or we want to finish well, the Well, call a, well call a, when you I'm do that, uh, number one, a house mm -hmm. is not an airport. Mm -hmm. And number two, the monies that are taken are, are, are given in the understanding or in anticipation of certain economic activity to repay the loan. Mm -hmm. When you, when you have an airport and you look at a, a hospital or repurposing a loan, these are two totally three, these are different issues and they do not apply. Okay, thank you very much for calling, caller. Thanks for keeping it real. We have, a, we have any more? 
Okay, so some people couldn't hold on too long. Now, as we have another call. Okay, good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Yes. The question I want to ask about the cut of civil servants. About the what? The, 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 the cut pay. There's no cut pay. Hello? Oh, but, but you all said that, that the, the civil servant, you all will cut their, their, their salary. There's, about there's, nobody, there's no, no such thing as a cut anyway. That has never been said. I would just want to know if after they, 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 they um, cut their, their, their civil servant salary at 45 or 60%, will they still be paying taxes? Well, caller, hello? <laughs> well, caller, everybody pays taxes. You still have to file your taxes too. They give you a short period of time, but of course, how is the government going to pay the next month or, or pay the bills that they have to pay? The government does that through taxes. I mean, everybody wants... I, let's keep it real, folks. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hi, good evening, Mr. Williams. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Williams, I do not know what all the fuss is about in regards to civil servants and pay cuts and those things. We have so many solutions who have lost their jobs. So many of them that have been laid off. Right? These civil servants still have a job to go to. Since March, these people have not been in office. I don't know if you've noticed most government offices which are with skeleton staff. Most of the clerks, most of these people have not even been in office. So if you're not working, you're not at work, you're not giving us the servant, giving us the service that we deserve, why are you complaining about getting half of your money? You've not worked for it. And even when they're supposed to be at work, most of these civil servants not even doing what they're supposed to be doing in the first place. So what is the issue that Prime Minister has stated, and most of the banks have agreed, that if for whatever reason you are laid off or you get a pay cut, you can file for a memorandum. What's the word? You have me. You have <laughs> a moratorium. You know moratorium. Yeah, moratorium, sorry. You could file for that. Where, where you don't have to pay for the, um, the your loan, mortgage the or your loan for the next three to six months, and they will just switch it over for after this thing is over. Yeah. Why are solutions making it so hard? And I just want to reiterate, caller, that the fear factor, the pushing of the propaganda, there is no and there has not been and never has been proposed to be any pay cut. There's no pay cut. Mr. Williams, I really don't understand why solutions are making such a big issue out of it. You're going to get half of your salary. The banks will not charge you for the mortgage. They may not charge you for the loan. So what is the problem? Lucy Lake and um, Wasco has said that they would not be cutting you off. Mm -hmm. They will give us a grace period of three months. So what is the problem? Mm -hmm. I see that this government is trying so hard to assist the people of St. Lucia. But yes, we listen to all the propaganda. On, on social media and on the radio shows. You have 30 seconds, caller. Anyways, Mr. Williams, have a blessed night. I hope somebody else calls. Okay, thank you very much. That's thank that. you very much. A bond, folks, and especially a government bond, is considered to be guaranteed. Government bond, it's a promise. It's a, it's a note. It's a promise that you get a certain amount of interest for paying into the government and you get a piece of paper is it's a bond it says in it matures in one year in 24 months in three years whatever and you get six percent interest that is what had been proposed there's never been any salary cut now i want to talk about the alcohol thing and many people are distraught about alcohol being the licenses being suspended a few weeks ago folks there's nobody to blame for that situation than St. Lucians themselves. The government did not stay on its own and wake up one day and say, you know what, let's stop the alcohol. St. Lucians were the ones who showed up at the river limes, who showed up at places in crowds, who were in bars when they were supposed to be closed during curfew. And the problem here is not about alcohol. The problem here is about the corona virus not corona bear the corona virus and too many people 
were out and about consuming alcohol which had to be stopped one person could be the downfall of this country one person it's, it's undoubtable right now we all know and, I, and to be quite honest folks we all know somebody who drinks who's an alcoholic we live in a small society whether it's by the market whether it's in your community in Labry, in viewfort wherever we all know them the warm years we call them the the wife abusers the wife beaters the abusers we know about the problems in saint lucia and the fact remains that saint lucia in the world has just about the highest rate of diabetes fueled by what alcohol consumption so when you tell me oh i just want a little wine at my home to drink wine folks if you're at your home in these times with the concerns that everybody has and you cannot do without a bottle of wine then you have a problem you have a problem if because the excuses you hear sound very much like the excuses drug addicts make that alcoholics make and the problems that we have with alcoholism in saint lucia are not a secret they are not and i say that with absolutely no apologies at all if you like your alcohol you like it but you have to understand the circumstances and the conditions that exist in saint lucia and the world today if the government says no milk no juice no whatever as an adult you're supposed to understand the reasons behind that blame your own selves blame the people who couldn't control themselves who are a threat to us all thank you very much again folks it was a wonderful night with you as usual look out next week for another episode of Keeping It Real. I'm Norbert Williams. Good night.